at this place in history, we're in Ripton with Executive Director of the Vermont Historical Society, Steve Perkins. Steve, I'll admit, I've been looking forward to this one for a couple <laughs> years now. Robert Frost. I mean, how could we talk about Vermont, especially Ripton, without talking about Robert Frost? So we're here. The marker's over our shoulder, but we thought we'd take a little hike and go check out the cabin where he did some of his writing. Land was ours before we were the land. She was our land more than a hundred years before we were her people. She was ours in Massachusetts, in Virginia, but we were England, still colonials, possessing what we still were unpossessed by, possessed by what we now no more possess. So the historical marker back there stated he was a Vermonter by preference. I'm yes. guessing not born here. <laughs> no, but I mean, and the marker also said, you know, an American poet by recognition. And to really think of Robert Frost as, you know, owned by the United States. He was born in California to Southern parents and his childhood was spent in New Hampshire, you know, formative years there. And he went to school at Dartmouth. He went to school at Harvard, didn't finish in either of those places, spent time in England. I mean, so he really traveled all over, but ultimately he spent the last 24 or so years of his life here in Ripton, or at least the summers uh, when he wasn't traveling. And I think felt that this in some ways was where he wanted to spend the last years of his life and, and kind of called it home. So he had this cabin, this is his writing cabin, and uh, it's part of the Homer Noble Farm. So in 1939, this was a couple years after his wife died, and they're, by the way, they're buried in Bennington. So he did, he lived down in Southern Vermont as well. He bought the Homer Noble Farm, uh, the white farmhouse is here at the beginning of the property, but then he's got this cabin in the back where he Wrote. A lot of people in the area knew him, and he became very involved with the Middlebury College Breadloaf Writers Conference. And Middlebury College owns this property now, and uh, he would mentor writers. He'd work with the director of that program. And so you think of spending summers at the cabin writing poetry, working with students and writers from Middlebury College in the off season which was the winter, traveling around the world, meeting with presidents and dignitaries and kings and queens and representing the United States. Something we were withholding made us weak until we found out that it was ourselves we were withholding from our land of living and forthwith found salvation in surrender. So I wonder if he was kind of treated as almost a celebrity when he was here, if it truly was his escape, he was just another Vermonter. <laughs> you know, it's interesting, I've, I have, uh, you know, some writings that were written at the time that the historic marker was placed for people that knew him, and I think it went both ways. I think people took pilgrimages to come to Ripton to see this great sage, this great poet, and meet with him and work with him, but the people who lived right in town protected him because he was you know, he was their guy. He lived here. He was called the first citizen of Ripton, Vermont, and was very much part of the community in that sense. When he died in 1963, they had these medals that were struck um, to commemorate his life. Of course, he was Poet Laureate of the United States. He became very famous for speaking at John F. Kennedy's inauguration, some of the uh, most famous film uh, we have of him. So after his death, I think he was certainly mourned by many. And you know, this is a, a pretty amazing medal that was struck um, to commemorate wow. him. So this coin was struck by the state of Vermont uh, to commemorate Robert Frost as well. So it has the Vermont State Seal on one side and then this beautiful kind of front-on view of Robert Frost um, on the front. But again, showing how much he meant to this state and to this region. And of course, you can travel and see all these sites yourself. You can come, you can take a walk on the Robert Frost Nature Trail and read some of his famous poems there. You can have a picnic by the historic marker and you can take the hike that we just did and come see this cabin where he did his writing. Such as we were, we gave ourselves outright. The deed of gift was many deeds of war to the land vaguely realizing westward, but still unstoried, artless, unenhanced, such as she was, such as she would become. At this place in history.